Ready? Three, two, one. Ah, oh, we're up. Are you sure you're okay, dude? Yeah. Mike? Yeah. I'm an absolute savage. Nasty, ratchet, ravage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sound Mike, before we hop into the video, I know the world's a little bit weird. Some cities, countries, states are a little bit more open than others, but a lot of people still have their goals in mind. A lot of you are back in the gym, uh, and to help you with that, Kaizen's running our summer sale. So use cold SWOL, S-W-O-L-E, the summer SWOL sale, 40% off any training program. You want to build some muscle, build some strength, lose some fat. We have some diet templates to help you and educate you on your path towards your goals. We also do still have home workouts for you guys that are stuck inside much like us. So kaizentraining.com, code SWOL, 40% off. Enjoy and enjoy the video. Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. We're inside a Third Street Barbell, Sacramento, California, 3SB, Third Street Athletics, 3SB.co, 3RD Street Barbell on Instagram. Today we're going to talk about uh, courage, leap of faith. Before we dive into this thing, if you have ever worn a vest, a hoodie, a jacket, or a t shirt, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. If you enjoy, Ice cold water, lukewarm water, room warm water, or hot water. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. If you like crunchy ice, round ice, cubed ice, or just a nice frosty glass of your favorite beverage, give this thing a thumbs up. Leave your comments below, questions below. So, leap of faith brings me back. I think it's a common thing where you go to a ropes course to do some team building. I don't know if that's common or hippy dippy. I went to a little hippy dippy school and so we did those often. And the leap of faith is you climb up on a thing like this that I'm on right now and there's a trapeze. I don't know, man. It's probably not that far out, but when you're up there, you're probably 50 feet in the air, 50, no joke. And it probably is only about three feet in front of you, maybe four feet in front of you. But from the ground and when you're looking at it, it looks like it's 12 feet. It looks like I'm gonna be have, have to be an Olympic long jumper to reach this thing or i'm gonna to fall to my death it's called the leap of faith because it's kind of like that you know do you like the three two one and then you just got to make a decision you just got to go that's the topic of the day how to do the leap of faith how to get the courage uh to kind of step into something um business wise i've used this reference a couple times in a couple podcasts uh back to like the climbing there's a documentary on a gentleman who's actually here from Sacramento, and he uh, free climbed Half Dome, which is a huge freaking mountain. Um, El Capitan, I think, is like the side of the mountain of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park here in California. Uh, been there multiple times, grew up. It's kind of like a, a, a pretty common place to go if you grow up in California, especially in Northern California. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning views, waterfalls, forests, redwoods, that whole deal. Um, but this mountain is supposed to be one of the most difficult, one of the tallest things to climb. This dude did it with no safeties. They analyzed his brain, and I don't know how true or not this is, but in the documentary, they say that he, whatever, you know, your medulla oblongata or whatever, his doesn't trigger when he's scared. Like, the, to, to get his to trigger with, like, adrenaline or fear or, like, you know, the adrenaline chasing junkie, his needs, like, a billion volts compared to what we need. So... Although he's nervous to climb this thing, he's not even 50% not even as nervous as the rest of us. And in some senses, um, I think I have that with projects. I have that with um, businesses. I have that with content. I have that with doing what I wanna do in a way. And I don't, going through therapy and talking to my friends, and I, I consider myself pretty self-aware. I hang out by myself a lot and I just think. I don't know what that stems from. Um, often courage, I feel like, is spoken about when you are so confident in yourself that you're not even thinking about negative outcomes. And that's definitely not what I would say I have. I don't think I have courage to go and do that, but I think what I do have is hope. I think when I'm not in a dark place, which we've talked about here, some of my depression, some of my anxieties, one of my gifts is that I have insane hope and I have insane um, vision 
of what can be or what could be. And I'm just not, more so not afraid of what the negative outcomes may be or I'm more excited about what the potentials are. So I chase those things down. Another thing is that I just don't have that many options. I don't want a normal job. This is the, the life I'm lucky enough to live, having all your guys' support here and Instagram and Twitch and podcasts for so many years that um, kind of with your support and then what we'll get into next, how I chose my team that gave me confidence to make this move. Um, not that I feel invincible, but like this is what I'm, this is the path that's supposed to happen. This is what I want to do. This is what we want to do and we're going to do it our way. Uh, and this is one of the very few projects. I've opened uh, multiple businesses that we talked about in the last video. Be sure to check that out. Um, I've been a part of a lot of growings of businesses from the very bottom, from the very beginning before the internet knew what it was and to making a, a pretty substantial stamp on the fitness realm. I've been a part of a lot of those companies in terms of marketing in front of the camera, social media marketing, campaigning behind the camera, logistics, product development. But this is one of the very few that, um, and, and I hope my team feels the same way, that this is like through and through us. Like we just sat there for two hours deciding like what's the next step, what it's gonna look like, what it's gonna feel like, what we want it to look like, what we don't want it to look like. Every single step, all four of us, our team, are, are making uh, together. So it's 100% it's me. Um, and I, you hear a lot of musical artists talk about like that, and maybe some like painting artists. And although we're opening a business, because of the renovation factor and the apparel factor, I. You know, if someone asked me what my job is, I'd say I'm a creator. I don't really know what my job is. I'm definitely a coach. I have some expertise in the fitness realm. I can teach you how to lift, get strong, lose some weight, get lean, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I would say I'm a creative in nature. So this whole project, we're building like a whole, like hemisphere is not the right thing. We're building a whole like new world. And I'm not talking Aladdin, but you know. Uh, someone asked me a question like how do you choose your team like we talked about how we're choosing the, the, the vibe the branding the, the apparel what the vision is why I'm opening a gym maybe because it's lacking in my area in my city I think it's lacking in terms of the fashion and fitness and and, and, and athleisure that I like to wear and that I grew up wearing and kind of the nostalgia of growing up as a basketball player and always like athleisure is so weird to me that it's a thing because all I ever wore was baggy tees and basketball shorts my whole life. If you play basketball, that's just what you wore. If it was winter, you'd wear basketball shorts and then you put sweats on top and then you take the sweats off and go play basketball. Like that's what I always wore. Um, so for now it to be like cool and normal people wearing like shorts and a t-shirt and like a, a, a hat as their everyday stuff, that's been my everyday. So to me to represent my nostalgia and our fashion as a collective group, our style, our creativity in that, um, is kind of a no brainer to me. Choosing like partners, teammates, this squad that we assembled, well, if you guys listen to 50% Facts, me and Jim McDee's podcast, um, Jim McDee's a no brainer. Uh, him and I have worked together in some capacity for uh, almost eight years, podcasted, business trips, communicated, different projects here and there. Um, I think we have similar visions. I think uh, in a lot of ways we balance each other out with how we think. We obviously uh, are different ages and experiences of what we do as a living, uh, where he has some marketing background or a large marketing background as an MBA. Um, and then he also ties it into the YouTube where all I have is the YouTube and I've learned some of the other stuff. So we kind of counteract what we have there. He's passionate, uh, he's all in, he's a hard worker. And uh, with the reno stuff, I don't know how we'd get through it without him because he has a clue of what he's doing and me and the boys just have some labor, but we don't know what the heck we're doing. So uh, in many ways, I chose the right dude. Um, he's easy to communicate with. We don't ever like fight bicker. A lot of times we do, you know, partnerships and business partnerships and you don't see eye to eye. You end up fighting like you're, you know, you used to fight with your third grade best friend or you, you know, argue with your spouse or significant other. Um, but luckily enough, we are on the same page with a lot of things and we just communicate well, you know, it's open, it's easy. Uh, and we both have similar visions. So it all lined up. Uh, we 50% facts where I was going back to our podcast. We interviewed a bunch of uh, business owners, uh, particularly in the fitness space over the last couple months. Um, and we talked to a bunch of them on like employees and trainers and how they hire and et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of them lined up with what I already believe is, and it's kind of, it's kind of counter to how the world hires people. It's not really about your skills, your degree. Uh, it's not really about um, what you can do because a lot of those things you can contract out you know, whether it be a web designer or whether it be, you know, insurance or, or tech guy or, or equipment or all these specialties, you can always just consult out when you want to start a company. And that's something I've learned from a very early age. Like I don't have to have a skill. <laughs> I'm skillless. I'm absolutely talentless. But if you have 
selflessness. That's the number one thing I look for in anybody I ever want to work with. You have to be about the team. You have to be about being a part of something greater than yourself, bigger than yourself, being a part of a project, a system, having a similar enemy or a similar goal as a like-minded unit. That's number one. And if someone can't do that, you're not going to be a part of my crew. I'm never going to work with you. If you can't have, be a part of something bigger than yourself, do your job, do your role in the bigger picture scheme, uh, I don't want to work with you. And I don't care if you're the best businessman on the planet. I don't care if you're a billionaire. I don't care if you're Elon freaking Musk. I don't want to work with you. It's not what I'm going to be a part of. So um, that's all tied into selflessness. Uh, that's all tied into the group over the individual mentality. Um, and that's something I obviously learned from my dad who was insanely loyal, insanely hardworking, insanely selfless. Um, I don't know why that's always just been a part of who I am. And that's not to say I'm an angel by any means, but I've always enjoyed team and I've always put the ultimate goal before my individual goal. Uh, and it shows in like my favorite basketball players are Magic Johnson, Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, things of this nature. Selflessness. Number two, I guess, would be loyalty, kind of ride or die stuff. And I know that sounds like whatever, but if you can't, I mean, Connor here, Kyle, that's the main team, right? Me and Jim. If you can't be in the gym when it's 100 degrees and we're eating cement for 10 hours, I don't want you, you know, in the hypothetical sense, in the Bentley when we're popping bottles six years from now, having success. Um, I don't want what a fair weather fan. Again, I don't care what your talent level is. If you're not down kind of for the cause and willing to work hard, I guess hard work, it would be number two if we have to give it an exact title label. Hard work is gonna be number two. If you can't grind, uh, and that term, it sets me off a little bit because everyone's always talking about it. Every entrepreneur talks about it. Just because you wake up at 4 a.m. doesn't mean you're a grinder. That doesn't entertain me. That doesn't please me. Do things when you don't want to do them. Work hard, work ethic. Get the job done that needs to be done in front of you. If you can't do that, you're also not on my team. I guess number three, if we had to just choose one, again, these are all just general things. I'm not a business guru and I'm not here to plan you, but if you're choosing employees, partners, um, it's kind of the communication positivity factor. If I don't want to be around you, if I can't talk to you, if I can't have fun, if we can't get through hard things and easy things, uh, you're not here. So um, having a sense of camaraderie. Uh, everyone always says don't do business with friends. Um, don't do business with family. I highly disagree. I don't think being friends or family is the issue. It's just like anything else. Doing business with the wrong friends or the wrong family is an issue. Um, if you have the correct friends or choose the right friends out of your group, and that's not saying that they still can't be your friends, but only certain ones are ones you probably want to go into business with, um, whether that is a financial thing, whether that's marriage, like same thing, right? Like regardless of sexual attraction or whatever we want to dig into like there's multiple friends that like you could hang out with on friday and then there's probably only certain friends that you could go on a week-long trip with and share an airbnb now multiply that by a billion now you're going through the stress of bills uh you know working hard manual labor meetings configuring your gym's business plan etc cetera, etc cetera. So it's just an escalated version of that friendship. Uh, and it's not a knock, you know, some people just don't get along and some people do, some are on different wavelengths, um, but that would probably be number three. Some of that I actually think is probably the most important thing. And it was a really good like question or you know, thought that's been in my mind that I've saw a couple times in the comments is like those two factors. Like how do you choose your team and then how do you have like the quote unquote courage to do these things, the leap of faith. Um, and that's the best answer I have for you. I'm no, again, no, business guru. I've been a part of some really cool things. I've been a part of some companies that made a lot, a lot, a lot of money. I've been a part of companies that make a, not a lot of money. I've failed multiple companies. Um, I've had multiple successful launches. Um, but number one, if you're with those people, I guess that a passion, that would be the, the fourth detail of the teamwork. If they have passion, if they give a shit, um, and it doesn't always have to be about the same thing. Uh, if Connor doesn't give a shit about what color the floor is, but he's very particular of the feng shui or how the retail area might look, or he's very particular on how we greet and treat our members. As long as someone has a passion for something, you'll at least draw my attention. And I know that seems easy. Like, well, everyone likes something like, nah, they don't, they don't. Everyone kind of likes things. Um, but passion is like a deep rooted non-ego drive that is so within a person's soul. And, you know, I think everyone's capable of passion, but I don't think everyone is a passionate human being. And that's something that I struggle with on the opposite end. I, I just can't turn it off. So I'm up to the middle of the night, you know, looking up different apparel and getting different inspirations from nature and the past and, and all these different artists. And I can't shut mine off sometimes. 
Um, I know Connor's the same. He's on Reddit looking up weird things in the middle of the night that, that he just wants to learn more about. Or it's just that that trigger that that you really give a shit. Um, and, and then again, that's that's probably the number four. So maybe Connor can recap it. I, I can't even remember where we started, but um, selflessness uh, definitely number one. Uh, tied into like a, a loyalty, hard work, uh, willing to get your hands dirty for the core. Fuck, what was number three? Some kind of community. Uh, all right. So number one is like a, it has to be selflessness, team player, be a part of something bigger than yourself. Number two is like a work ethic of some nature. You have to be able to work hard. And I don't need you to work tirelessly or insanely or, or be a workaholic, but you have to be able to, you know, get it done when it needs to get done. Number three, I got to want to be around you. There's got to be some type of relationship there, whether it's friendship. It could be purely business, but we have to be able to communicate and be on the same wavelength. Um, and that's not just about communication, but communication is a big part. Uh, enjoying one's company, being a positive energy in the room. People can feel that if you start to pay attention. Who, You don't have to be the number one guy at the party, but some people you're around, there's positive energy. Some people around, there's negative energy. Um, and then number four, it has to be passion. And these aren't in a tiered order. Uh, but passion is so important. You have to give a shit. You have to want to be better. You have to want to do things. Attention to detail. You have to want to be different, um, which could be number five even. Be unique. I don't want a yes man. I don't want a follower. I've sent tons of different things to Kyle via text. Hey man, what do you think about you know this color combo with this you know jacket? And he's like, nah, that's not that cool. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> Moving on. Next one. Uh, I can't surround myself with yes man or people that just don't care. So. That's where we sit. Gym update, floor's done. Painted the bathrooms. We're waiting on these accent walls and the details. Equipment order going in, first launch coming in. I don't know how we're gonna tease it, but the first apparel launch of 3SB, Third Street Athletics, is coming very soon, good company. Be a part of something bigger self, good company, man. Coming soon. So, apparel going in. I don't want to say it's the finishing touches, but we're in the finishing touches, so we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm gonna to go touch up the paint in the bathroom with the boys. They set it up for me. I appreciate them while I'm over here babbling. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Surround yourself with good company. I'm Solomon Mike. Out of here. How's that for a sign?